I'm, I can't wait till we see what the people on the Discord are yeah. paying for these wines in their own countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. True, There'll be some yeah. like, so one wine here's gonna cost like nine euro. Yeah. And we're so, just gonna be like, f you. Yeah, how dare you. you. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People. This is Blind Wine Tasting. And today we are tasting through six wines. They could be from anywhere in the world, but what we do know is that one is over $100 and the rest are all around 30 bucks or below. So this one's gonna be a bit of a test of quality and recognizing quality uh, amongst the wines. And I'm pretty sure I'm up to the task. Big ups to Different Drop for providing the selection and the challenge for us today. If you'd like 10% off these wines, there is a link in the description below. And of course, join us on Discord, have a chat. You'll see Henry, Noah, myself, even Lockie. Even Lockie gets on there. Come on guys, you can get on there too. Anyway, if you love what we do, hit the subscribe button. We definitely appreciate it. Enough from me, let's get tasting. Oh, oh, by the way, if you do feel so inclined and you happen to be living in Australia and you do love what we do, we could use the support. Now, some people just like to smash the subscribe button. Other people like to navigate to the Unico Zello website and go to the wine for the people section. Under that, they will notice a little wine bottle called Magic Number no. 38. A nice cheeky little Tarvel style Adelaide Hills Syrah that Noah made last vintage. Buying that, all the proceeds go directly to this channel, keep it operating and keep us being able to, well, we really just rinse the money, don't we? We just kind of like grab it. We get it from you and we just spend it with different drop and then, you know, provide this amazing content. By all means, if you do feel so inclined to show us some support, that is the best way to do it. Mm hmm Smells pretty simple. It's definitely not something I'd, I'd like aromatically spend over a hundred bucks on, but it smells pretty good. Like crunchy kind of golden apples, some nuts. This one's smelling like Chardonnay to start out with off the bat. Got that oaky thing happening. Got a bit of heat to it. But also some fruit, which, you know, classic Chardonnay things. Uh, damn, it feels like amazing Chenin Blanc. Start out at a very high, like if that is less than 30 bucks, oh, that is amazing. I'm gonna taste through all the wines before I tell you my guess for which one is the hundred dollar bottle. Brightly acid, steely minerality, very bistro, pub wine. Yep, okay, so the other week on the show, we had that Chardonnay that was sort of, I think I was calling it like the marvel of Chardonnays. Like it was really hitting your head, like hitting you over the head with like all this band service shit to get crowds in and get everyone excited. This one's a little bit more like, like less popular superhero movie. Like it's still hitting the notes, like Man of Steel maybe, or like Superman versus Batman. Like it's still got like that Chardonnay, like, hey, you came here for Oak, fantastic. Bad news, not as good of a movie. I got to admit, I would be happy to spend like $45 a bottle for this and I'd buy 12. I think that is all class. That's that's like starting at a really high. If it's, uh, it's definitely under 30. So we're gonna go, it's less than, yeah, less than sign goes that way. No, no mirrors. So less than a uh, variety, I don't know. Definitely a Cardinet, he says, not confidently. Shard, that'll be $30. And I will have one bottle of it because there are Chardonnays that I'd rather drink. <laughs> Wine number two, bit more of a richer gold color, bit riper. I thought the first wine was a really deep, dark sort of golden hue. We're gonna go deeper, going deeper. Was it going deep, going deep? Give me like aged Fiano or something like that, a bit of barrel aging on a Fiano because it has got that sort of like nuttiness and sort of crisp acidity, but then the color of it is misleading me. So like if it, if it wasn't this color, I'd be like bang, straight up Fiano, but the color is throwing me off a little bit. Uh, cracker one, I don't believe this is the $100 bottle, but I think it is a very, very good wine. I'd drop around about $38 a bottle, magic number, not because of obvious reasons, just because I think it's in the high 30s. And I'll buy three bottles. Again, not bad, nice and delicious. Simple, no oak, um, that ripe kind of tropical stone fruit really sticks out here. That great pineapple passion fruit thing is all there. Love the steely minerality thing, like kind of quincy, pear-y. 30, I have three bottles of it. And yeah, let's go aged Fiano, aged Fiano. I'm, I'm, it's really sitting in that sort of field for me. The giveaway is this sort of green papaya on the nose, as well as this is the con confirmatory note our confirming note, I guess, is that both the color and that note. So when I see deep dark color and I see that sort of green papaya, I kind of go, ooh, Marsan Roussan. Someone gave me a glass of that, I'd be really stoked. I think it's really good fun. Um, could be like some kind of Spanish number, could be something Italian, could be Fiano even. Like really baseline entry level um, Fiano from Campania. It doesn't have that waxy texture that I expect, but it's not bad, I quite like it. <laughs> 
three. This is gonna be my golden boy. It's gotta be. I've, I've said it's coming this whole time, so it's gotta have been here eventually. This is almost amber. Like, it could be skin contact, but it just has this underlying thing where I don't think it's like a full orange one. But then when does an, when does a white one become an orange one? Really? Because that looks orange to me. That is is amazing. Uh, either it, <laughs> so it's definitely aged on the floor. Rancio through the root. That is fantastic, Sherry. It's just such a food-friendly little wine. Yep, it's lithe, it's decadent. Yeah, it smells like apricots. Uh, this is cool. This is definitely seen a bit of skin contact. It smells like, it smells kind of like butterscotch snaps. Like, you know how butterscotch is like a very sweet smell and it's like creamy and all of that sort of stuff. But then when you're having the schnapps, there is like that definitive hit of alcohol on the back of the scent. Yeah, it's sitting a little bit funny. There is a little bit of heat there. So, you know, it does feel like it could well have been fortified, but we know for sure that this has experienced plenty of, of maturation. That is a cracker wine. That is just, that's exactly what um, what I tend to look for. That's like an aged Fino. Fino is already aged, but this is exceptionally aged. Super expensive. Um, and it reminds me of like Gravner, like any of those really amazing, like Northern Italian uh, skin contact wines that have seen extremely long amounts of age before release. It's just got that character. So it's very much like stone fruity but savory and like a little bit of it's almost got a similar finish to like a dark chocolate like imagine a dark chocolate covered apricot is sort of what i'm thinking that wine is two predictions one noah's gonna love that two henry's gonna hate that i would i would drop like 65 dollars a bottle for that and i'll buy 12 i just think it's all class <laughs> And now we're on to number four, into the red parts of the bracket. Uh, medium bodied red wine, medium bodied red wine. Ooh, juicy, very juicy. Plummy, blackberry. Nice plum color to it. I do like a plum colored red. It smells rich, it smells heavier than, like on the heavier side of things when you come into your red wines, but I have been wrong before. Fantastic dark chocolate cocoa nibs, lights a bit star anise. There's a lot of density here. Actually feels like the Somos Menthea uh, that we had earlier in the year. Just super quality here. It looks like some kind of like Southern French number. It could be like a, like a Languedoc number or even a Rhone number, but it's just so juicy, so chewy, very, very easy to drink. Definitely in that kind of uh, sub sub 100 bracket. And I'm gonna grab half a dozen because I, I like, I love this style of wine. It's such an all season style drinker. Probably still a little bit too hot for me. I'd imagine it's pretty high alcohol. I'd say it's at least 14%. I think, I don't believe it's about hundred bucks a bottle, to be honest, unless there's like a particular story behind it. Um, but although this one, I will probably or happily launch um, uh, $58 a bottle and I'd buy six. I'd love to see this in my cellar. I'd love to be able to crack it out on the right occasions. Yeah, like that. So you don't even need to have food with it, honestly. You just have a glass of red on like a cooler evening. It's bang on. It's absolutely bang on. Yummy, good, I, I, that's great value. That's 100% great value. Wine number five. This is looking darker, like less see-through than the previous wine. Moving onwards and upwards, we've gone basically deeper. Dark. These wines are, are like really dark. Like that's amazing. I mean, this is great. Like as far as something that you just, you want to have with like a great, like, you know, some kind of piece of red meat, whether it be lamb or veal or beef or anything like that, like a beef bourguignon with this would just be absolutely delicious. It's not Pinot, which is I know what people generally drink with that, with that meal. It smells like dad wine. It smells oaky, it smells like ripe. That's Shiraz. That is Shiraz every day of the week. It's got the tannin, it's got the pepper, it's got the spice, everything that's nice. It's actually, like I've, I've been drinking a lot more of this wine lately because I'm hanging out with my dad and he's got a lot of this style of wine to drink. So I'm coming around to it quite a bit. Wine number six better be something astronomical because I reckon that one there could easily be a hundred bucks and I would happily pay that for it. It is dense, it is old school. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, but wow, it is like really well put together. You know, sub $30 Pinot is extraordinarily hard to come by. Trust me, I know. But I love this kind of just, it's so bistro. It, like when you think of like central France and like the middle of the country, if you're going to a, like a, a local bistro that's got like a fucking epic wine list. For, I'd buy 12 and open three in the first five years years, three in the next five, et cetera, maybe extend it the last to like 10 to, to 15 year increments. Amazing Syrah. And one more, a bit lighter, a bit prettier, kind of a, li a little bit lighter than that first red wine. Okay, so it's Pinot-y, it's very bl bright, very fruity. 
sort of a bit of a phenomenon when they talk about Grenache with great Pinosity. I actually think this is Pinot, but I think it's Pinot from like Otago, like an area that has a like significant um, like power and weight to it that can make it almost appear like it's not Pinot. Strawberries, raspberries, black currant, stuff like that. Definitely, I'm going Gamay. I'm going um, real entry level Boge. Well, it's lovely, isn't it? It's really nice. That's a problem. So I was pretty confident the other one was going to be the expensive one. I mean, I think I'm going to stick with my original query. So I reckon the other one's going to be 120. Wine number three. Because the thing is that that other one is something unlike something of anything I've had before. So it's quite unique. And usually that'll be pricey because someone's done, done something different, which is more experimental and it's taken longer. So they need to charge more. Love that. Very mm. vibrant, very juicy. Tannins are really nice and tight, but definitely a lot more refreshing as far as the first two red wines that we've had. Something that's been done right for a long time and they've done this right. I reckon it's a little Grenache. Grenache. Spend 30 bucks on it, obviously, because that's how much they're costing, and I'll have six of those. But yeah, one number three. Can see you. You're expensive. Banging little line up there. You know, whites are pretty fun, reds are pretty fun. Third wine is definitely the ritzy number as it deserves to be. Um, but there's some really good value little numbers in here, this one particularly. Um, so let's see what the boys think. I don't think this is the $100 bottle. It depends, it could go one of two ways, bit of a hedge. I really do think that's that uh, previous wine was, but I would happily pay 65 bucks a bottle for it. No worries. Um, my personal wine lineup is that number three, which I just think is absolutely stellar. But let's just see what the other guys think. Let's hit this shit. Hit dude. the jets, man. We are back. We're on six wines. I personally love brackets like this. Why? Because it's not like you guys know, and now you guys will know how I feel about like blind identifi identifying sort of stuff. Because yes. I'm not sure that has, I know we're a blind wine tasting channel, mm. but blind identification kind of doesn't really mean much. Like congrats, you can tell a wine, where a wine is from on the basis of its taste. Don't but, listen, okay, it's, yeah. Can it's, you tell whether it's good or not? You know? <laughs> yeah. And this is one of those wines where I believe the bracket was one of these is $100 or over 100 bucks, and the rest are all like $30 and below. Yeah, I tend, I tend to agree with you in the sense that you guys have way more knowledge about how wine should taste, where they might be from, blah, blah, blah. But for me, like ultimately I'm a wine consumer, not a wine producer. Mm. So I would love to be wrong about this. Like if the thing that I've picked is the expensive one, it's the cheap one. Awesome, that means I can get a wine that I think yeah. is fancy and expensive for yeah. cheap. Like, yeah. I really like these brackets as well because it's sort of like the ultimate thing that you want to do is rock up to a house party, go, try this, and everyone's like, whoa, what's this? Like 30 bucks is what it is. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the dream for me. Like, that's I'm, I can't wait till we see what the people on the Discord are yeah. paying for these wines in their own countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. True, There'll be some yeah. like, so one wine in here is going to cost like nine euro. Yeah. And we're so, just going to be like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, like, how dare you? <laughs> if you guys are following on in the comments, please, if the if you can access these wines in your own country, let us know how much you pay for them. Yeah. Uh, because I believe that this is probably one of the one of the best value brackets. Should we start with wine number one? Yeah. 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 We always do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think this was the hundred dollar nah. bottle, but I thought it, was it could be. Not. No. I, thought it could, I thought it could. I thought, hey man, it could be like some interesting like Shannon, maybe. My my gut feeling on this was Shannon. I, uh -huh. I mean, yeah, I got that kind of energy. Could definitely be Shannon, but I was thinking more Italian. I oh, was thinking yeah. this is like suave, like mm. really simple, clean, kind of textural, refreshing white wine. Like very just like afternoon park wine, lunch wine, Wednesday, like very, very simple, fun. You know, it's delicious. It's fair. Yeah. I, I went way down the Chardonnay path because it just, you smell yeah, it. It's, yeah, yeah, it's got some Chardonnay right. shit going on. Ding, idiot, smells that, Chardonnay, bang. So mm. I was like, yeah, mm. that's cool. It's not like, when I was down that path, I'm going like the most expensive Chardonnay so I've tried to like really soft and integrated and yeah. all this stuff meshes really well together. But this has got like some pretty outstanding characteristics. Mm -hmm. and I don't mean outstanding in a way that it's just like, this is the best in the show. It's just sort of like, this yeah. is what you see. Yep. Um, so for me, I was like, yep, 30 bucks. I'll have a bottle of it. It wasn't my favorite. Well, I took home 12 and I paid 45. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I think this is exactly a $30 bottle of wine. Uh, and I wanted three. Went too fast. Excellent stuff. I it's thought, really good value. I, I thought they were all $30. Like, they Yeah, 30 on, bucks so. and under. Yeah. Oh! Oh, how's that, boys? Oh, dude, that smells is like amazing. a duck, quacks like a duck. I don't know if I deserve it, it smells like one, but yeah, hey, we'll <laughs> that. I don't get to wear really the crown too often. 
That's uh, really Kumu River, New Zealand. New Zealand. Oh, as soon as I smelled it, I was like, fuck, it might be New Zealand. Like just before, like, uh, which I didn't communicate, so you can all call me a liar if you want. Line number two. Where do, I, I, I went downhill from here. Yeah, this is where right. I went, Shannon. Uh, okay. A little bit ripe, a little bit more tropical, like you're really passion free, pineapple-y. I, I didn't go down, I just went linear. I thought mm. it was like kind of same as I ended up. I ended up calling this an aged Fiano, just because the color of it was a little bit bolder than mm -hmm. I was expecting from Fiano. What did I, I was 38 bucks, for no particular reason, um, and three bottles. Um, yeah. Lock, how much was it? <laughs> yeah, 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 look at yeah. Very, very close. <laughs> so what variety is it, sir? Grillo. 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 Yeah. yeah. So Sicilian native variety kind of flies under the radar on the mm. island because whites are generally dominated by the Etna varieties. Mm. Reds, it's either Norello, um, um, Nero Davila, of course, and then some Frappato as well. Uh, so Grillo really sneaks under the radar. And we've tried a few Grillos on the show and we've always kind of been surprised by their value. But yeah, and it always seems like it kind of comes second or third fiddle to like Caracante. Yeah, or Catarato. Yep. Grillo is this sort of like, it's amazing, great variety. Yeah, I... Amazing, great variety. Mine. All right, wine number three. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. My yeah. prediction was that you're going to hate this. Uh, look, I... I don't understand it. <laughs> like, I don't... I, like, I'm drinking it and I'm like, what, what's going on? My takeaway from it was, imagine having like a dark chocolate covered apricot. Oh. Yes, it was sort of what I was thinking. Oh. Because it's got like a nutty thing, but then the yep. finish on it is that really like cacao-y like. Yep, so oh, proud man. of him. And yeah. I'm so proud. He's come so far. I know. <laughs> oh, it's so amazing. <laughs> but then it smells like cheap dessert wine. But like not <laughs> like it doesn't. But like this is what cheap dessert <laughs> wine is. Ah, emulating. and you've disappointed me again. Ah, <laughs> so good. The young one. I've, I've actually just said straight up, I'd pay sixty five bucks and I'd buy twelve. And if that is under thirty, that's wild. That's motherfucking Gravna, my friend. That is a hundred and a hundred plus bucks, easy. I said it was one hundred and twenty dollars, and I wanted a dozen of it. Yeah, I was the exact same. Um, oh. Yeah, delicious. I bet my left that that is sharing. Okay, well let's <laughs> let's let's see. Let's see. All right, it's Lock on. It. How much was it? Oh, damn it! Manzanilla, aged Fino. God damn it! God damn it! It's cool. I like it. Well, fucking, which one's the expensive one in the next bracket? Jesus Christ. I... Oi, chef. Yeah. That was awesome. I think I... Okay, so I had one other that was my guess for the expensive one, but I think I'm gonna I get it wrong. I didn't pick now. the alcohol being that high. That's fucking awesome. How high is it? 15. You. That's in the slot. Yummy. Wine number four. I thought this was gonna be the high alcohol uh, pick oh. of the bunch. Um, I liked it. Uh, I thought it was this sort of... Italian-esque thing. My head went to Tempranillo because where else is it going to land eventually? I reckon you're on on the money. That's really nice of you to say. It's actually quite pretty. Mm. Mm. I think I misjudged this one. I, I didn't put a peg as the hundred buck bottle. Um, I I actually said it was Menthea. Uh, I would be willing to pay fifty eight bucks a bottle for it. Um, but I think Tempranillo is the right shout. And obviously, being fifty eight, it's probably not the hundred dollar bottle. But I reckon that's really really good wine. I like I I, really, I liked it. I want half a dozen. I want uh, half a dozen as well. Yeah, I wanted three, but oh, there we go. We're on there. I reckon. Do you reckon Southern French? Okay. French is well, almost fifty bucks for seven fifty mil. Ah. <laughs> Prettiest Malbec I've ever seen Amazing. in my life. That's the Malbec? That's, yeah, right. Not the Did, next one? <laughs> that's crazy. That's yeah, so wow. elegant. That is amazing. That is so elegant. That's so cool. This is not your dad's Malbec. Not your dad's. dad's Definitely yeah. not. Uh, from Mendoza. Is it 20 bucks? Did you say 20 bucks? 20, 21 bucks. Is there any Argentinians in the crowd here? Let us know how much this wine actually goes for in Argentina. Like, <laughs> uh, real, like I want to know that. Because... A handshake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, wine number five. I peg this as a hundred dollar bottle. Really? Uh, yeah. Yep. I, I, I think this is old school hundred dollar bottle energy. Interesting. Yeah, I called it Shiraz for thirty bucks. I want three bottles of it. Yeah, I actually called it Syrah as well. But now that you're speaking Bordeaux in my ear, I'm smelling it's that. I'm dusty. You know? It's yeah, dusty. yeah, yeah. Sand? Maybe. Maybe yeah. we're talking about. Uh, I did mention Chianti in the fucking tasting, but I went bit Bordeaux. All right. I definitely wanted twelve though. Yeah. Loved it. I had uh, two. Yeah. There we go. Okay, well, well done. done. Well, well done. done. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Go. I thought I was going to get it for the sherry call. Oh, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> 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 it's way better than this call. California. Uh, wow. Napa, Napa Valley. <laughs> Napa Valley. Napa Valley, Palermo. Uh, 
St. Helena. I love that we're getting more uh, American wines in Australia. Mm. I really, really, really do because like we've only ever been shown in Australia like a really narrow, narrow spectrum of American wines. Yep. And that's only because Barossa predominated sort of the, the, the sort of psyche mm. of what Australian wine is. Um, that's awesome. So that leaves this wine, which I actually Lust. tipped and toed on whether or not these were the hundreds. This was the one that I had as my backup. As yeah. The, like, I was like, oh, Close. That's, that's too weird for it to not be expensive, but it was sherry, I don't drink sherry. But so. the fact that that is, I actually thought, potentially, you know how some Grenache can kind of feel like Pinot? Mm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, is this Grenache or is this Pinot from Central Otago? Is this like Pinot with power? Or is it Gamma? Or is it gamma? Mm. Yeah. Easy drinking. On the nose, I was straight up Pinot, then I tasted it and I was like, oh, gotta be Grenache. So yeah, I'm sorry, exactly. I'm just happy to I'm be included in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to feel. It's so nice to not be over here just being like, you reckon? I thought it was a cab sap. So <laughs> it's nice to be around the ballpark. Yeah. All right, well, I wanted 12. I wanted 12. I wanted six. Yummy. Grenache. By Jerome. Grenache. Hey! <laughs> God damn it, I'm tasting off here. That's great. That that's, is fantastic. That's what though. you want from Code de Rain. It's juicy, it's fun, it's live, it's yeah. great. And you know, that's where the extra tannin and savoriness mm. you, like, is coming from with some Shiraz and mm. the birds from Matara. Shit well like done. that. It was cool. Wine of the lineup? Oh my God, I don't even know, man. Well, the one we bought the most of was Code de Rain. Yeah. It's a CDR. Oh, actually, no, we, no, we all love the fucking Menthonia. Yeah. Yeah, 12. You're 12. into it. Yeah, 12. 12. Um, Oh, that feels weird. Bring it back, baby. Yeah, like, Sherry. Sherry needs your help. Sherry, why <laughs> Sherry, like literally, it's an um, an amazing awesome. uh, region of wine that is on its fucking last legs because no one's drinking the stuff. Drink the shit because we all so thought it was good. super expensive. Well, me and Henry idiots thought it was super expensive. Yeah. Uh, when it's just this is just good value. That, that were natty before it was cool to be. They were like the OG. So I've just found out so the is a region. Jesus Christ, I thought it was a style of it's drink. It's both. Okay, good. And on that note, yeah. we're going to be on here till next show. week. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Matania. Bye.